So what I'm going to do is, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this thing and I'm going to put it right over there. So now it's there. You can see it. We don't have to worry about it. And so now what do we have? Well, then we see that thing right there equals the limit. I'm writing it in a very tight font here so I can put a lot of stuff on. Remember, I don't care what fi size font you use as long as you write it. As long as you write it. And when you distribute that, notice that the 40 over 3 multiplied by the 3 halves over there is actually going to give me uh, 20. Because the 3 is cancel and 40 over 2 is 20. When you distribute that 40 over 3 with the square root of 6 times delta t, you get what? Well, you get plus 40 square root of 6 all divided by 3 times delta t. And when you take that 40 over 3 and multiply it by that last delta t squared, what you see is plus uh, 40 over 3 delta t squared. But don't forget the minus 20. So I have to put in a minus 20. And then I have to divide all that mess by delta t. Now that looks really long and awful until you discover that something really spectacular and really beautiful has happened. And in fact, even if you aren't a big math fan, even if you hate math, you have to admit something really spectacular has happened. And once you see it, you'll have to admit that is pretty cool. Because with all this stuff and all this complicated thing going on here and it's getting really long and you can't even almost fit it on a page, notice that some amazing coincidence has happened. I have a 20 and I have a minus 20. That wasn't planned. That wasn't choreographed. That's just an act of nature. Those things add to give 0. Those things cancel. And what's left? Well, what's left are just these two terms on the top. But notice they have a common factor of delta t. So we can finally use the old technique of factoring the top to compute this limit. So after we expand that whole complicated looking thing, we see a little bit of collapse, and then we get to this. Let's factor out that common factor on the top of delta t. I'm still taking the limit as delta t goes to 0. But now, I factor the delta t out. And what am I left with? I'm left with 40 divided by square root of 6 over 3 plus 40 divided by 3 times delta t. I just took out one of those delta t's. So I took that one out. I have two of them here, so I have one left over. And I divide that whole thing by delta t. And look, folks, you can now see the 0 over 0. You can now see that indeterminate form. We finally, after untangling all this stuff, we finally have been able to isolate that problem child. It's 0 over 0. There it is. And so I can just cancel that away very happily as long as I make one promise with you. And the one promise is that delta t doesn't equal 0. But is it going to equal 0? No, because we're only asking, what is it approaching as we get arbitrarily close to it? So this is completely OK. So now I'm left with this thing. And what is that limit? If I now take the limit, if I now let delta t approach 0, what happens to this term? That term gets smaller and smaller and smaller because delta t is going to 0. So that term vanishes. And what am I left with? I'm left with just that number. And so this equals 40 times the square root of 6 all over 3 miles per hour. That is the instantaneous velocity that I was traveling at the moment that I crossed that sign. And we figured it out just by looking at this very basic formula. It's amazing. It all came from this. It's no harder than this. But I had to make the delta t approach 0. So I had to take the limit as delta t approached 0, plugged everything in, and I got that number. Now. Let me just ask, finally answer the question, did I break the law? question that's been plaguing us since basically the dawn of humanity. I take 40. Well, actually, let's do it this way. I'll take 6 and take the square root, multiply it by 40, and divide, and divide by 3. Now, remember, in those other examples we saw, remember what I was approaching. Right? What numbers were I approaching? I was approaching 30-some-odd miles an hour there. Let's see what the instantaneous one is. This equals 32. I don't know if you can read that or not. In fact, since this question has been plaguing us, maybe I can actually show it. Can you see that there? 32.6598 something. 32.66 miles per hour at that moment. So 
there are three things that I think we can conclude at this point. The first thing is, I really was cooking at that point. Second thing is, I seem to, at least on a bicycle, have no regard for, for traffic safety. And the last thing is that now we are really empowered to answer the very first and the most fundamental question of calculus. How can we find instantaneous velocity? And the answer is, we just revert back to something that we already knew and now use a new idea of taking a limit and let that thing, let that time shrink to zero.